Greetings fellow gorehounds and welcome back to another blood splattered vlog. Alrighty then, so this week I'm not talking about a horror movie so much as an awesome show that I saw on Netflix. And while I say I saw it on Netflix, and while it does have the Netflix like original series logo on it, I'm pretty sure this is a show that they bought from a British company because it's clearly a British show that Netflix owns. And the show I am of course talking about is Crazy Head, a show about two crazy girls who exercise demons. And I pretty much stumbled on this show just in a random Netflix search, just trying to find something show-like to watch, because Supernatural was in hiatus, and I just needed some sort of fix. And I was looking at a bunch of potential shows to watch, like iZombie or The 100, but for whatever reason, I just wasn't feeling them at the time. But then I stumbled across Crazy Head, and the idea about a show about two crazy mental patients who exercise demons, that sounded, like, really fun to me. And it sounded right up my alley as a really big Supernatural fan. And little did I know when I clicked on watching the show that it's actually a straight-up horror comedy show. In fact, the show reminds me a lot of stuff like Kimmy Schmidt in that it's like wall-to-wall -wall great one-liners one right after another. And does a really great job of taking some mundane situations and adding a supernatural twist to them and just making them fucking hilarious. And because it was a British show, I noticed it was willing to go in directions that American shows often don't. Like within the first few episodes, I see one of the main characters holding a dildo just kind of casually. That was pretty cool. And a lot of the humor is pretty raunchy. There's a whole lot of sex jokes in this show. Also, a whole lot of piss and fart jokes, but, like, it's weird how it sounds classier coming from British accents. And apparently the person who created the show is also the person who created the show The Misfits, which I've heard a lot of really good things about, but I haven't checked out yet. But yeah, without getting into spoilers, this show is about these two girls who befriend one another, and they're both seeing psychiatrists because they both seem to have problems with seeing things. But one of them helps the other realize that what they're seeing is not hallucinations, what they're actually seeing is demons and that what they are are these things called seers. Which essentially means they are not ordinary humans, they have the supernatural ability to see things. In other words, see supernatural things. And we're introduced to this concept of demons by one of their friends being possessed by a demon and them being forced to perform an exorcism on the friend. And when I say this show has raunchy humor, a good example of that would be that when they have to perform an exorcism on a person, they have to pee on the person who is possessed. Which leads to some really great, awkward, hilarious moments. But one of the really big things I loved about this show was that this was a show about two girls that was unapologetically about two girls. It didn't shy away from anything, including female masturbation and period stuff. In fact, for example, there are scenes in the show where the two main characters discuss what demon semen feels like. Turns out, it's pretty cold. And it was just kind of nice to see a show about two girls where they're not, like, forced to fit some sort of, like, teen stereotype. This thing ain't no vampire diaries, I'll tell you that. Oh, and by the way, another good example of, like, the humor of this show is that the way they kill demons when they're not exercising them is by shoving poles up their asses. That is literally, like, the official method. So this show has a whole lot of unwanted anal penetration. Which might be the first time I've ever said that about a show that wasn't Oz. But yeah, so much happens on the show, and it's only six episodes long, so it's not even a long investment. I don't know what more to talk about before going into the spoilers, so I guess I'll just say, I highly recommend Crazy Head, especially if you're a fan of other supernatural comedy shows like Reaper. Because in many ways, this show actually reminded me of Reaper, but with girls. So yeah, it's on Netflix, and it is a show that Netflix owns. It's got the Netflix logo on it, so I'm pretty sure no matter what region you're in, you can probably watch this if you own Netflix. If not, I don't know how else to watch it, so you're just gonna have to figure it out on your own. And with that all said, my fellow Gorehounds, let us move on to the spoilers. <laughs> So the main character we're first introduced to is this blonde mousy girl who very much is one of those people that like doesn't like to be seen or talked to. She's a little antisocial and you can tell the reason for that is because the fact that she sees things makes her weird to other people and she doesn't want to be seen as crazy so she just doesn't engage people at all just to be safe. With the one exception being her roommate who is very much the outgoing social butterfly girl. And one day she meets a girl named Raquel, who is hands down my favorite character on this goddamn show. She is just this short, pudgy black girl who sees demons and takes no shit from nobody. And she ends up meeting the blonde main character and explaining to her that, oh no, you're not crazy, what you're seeing is demons. And she knows this because she's been hunting demons her whole life. And at first the blonde girl's like, ah, th this is crazy, that can't possibly be, this can't possibly be true. But then she gets stalked and attacked by a demon who ends up possessing her best friend. In other words, ends up possessing her roommate. 
And so then left with her friend trying to kill her, she's left with no choice but to go like, oh, this must be real because this doesn't seem like it's just in my head. So she teams up with Raquel and tries to perform an exorcism on her friend, but it goes horribly wrong because it turns out Raquel is not actually as adept as she lets on. She's one of those characters that exudes a lot of confidence, but in reality just kind of stumbles through life and hopes for the best. And this ends up backfiring in a really bad way because yes, they end up exercising the demon out of her best friend, but they also end up killing her and then resurrecting her as a revenant. And in this show's lore, revenants are basically undead people who thirst for blood. So they're like, fuck, what do we do now? So what they end up trying to do is trying to feed the friend like guinea pigs and like taking her off to this cabin in the woods and trying to figure out a cure. But then more demons show up and start stalking them and trying to kill them. And it turns out there's actually a much bigger plot going on underneath all of this, a much bigger plan, a much bigger scheme. Because the demons, what they want to do is they want to open a gate to hell and unleash hell on earth. But they can't do that without a proper gateway, and the only way to open a proper gateway is with a half-demon. If a demon mates with a human and they have a half-demon, half-human child, they essentially become Carrie. Carrie with a mix of Firestarter. But on top of having like telekinetic and fire starting powers, they also, when they get extremely emotional, can open gateways. And as it turns out, we're introduced to a character who Raquel knows, who is this kind of like brooding, like kind of gothy looking dude, who for like the first few episodes you think is like her boyfriend or something, but then he turns out to be a demon and you're like, oh, she's been fucking a demon. Well, she did say that demon semen is cold, so it would make sense that she did sleep with a demon at one point. But no, it turns out he's not a boyfriend, he's actually her father. And Raquel is a half-demon, half-human hybrid. So, say, if the demons were to get her to emotionally react at, say, like, the stroke of midnight on Halloween, then the doorway to hell would open wide up. And I believe at one point they have a joke where they say it would open up like a hooker's legs. Because, like I said, this show's full of a whole bunch of raunchy humor. And yeah, I'm not going to tell you, like, where things go from there, because needless to say, that leads into the climax of the show, which leads to some crazy shit. But I will say, I love every character in the show. Like, there's a whole bunch of side characters that I haven't even gotten into that are really awesome. Like, the main character has this one co-worker who ends up helping them as the show goes on and discovering that, oh shit, demons and shit are real. And he's kind of the guy who's basically stuck in the friend zone with the main character. And I fucking love this dude, because while he comes across, like, this, like, douchey, creepy guy, like, he always ends up with the heart of gold in the end. And by that I mean he will always do something really big and grand and make you go like, oh shit, this is actually a really good guy. He just has zero social skills when it comes to talking to women. Also, he has no filter, so he's constantly like saying shit that he really shouldn't. Like at one point he ends up admitting that he jerked off into some non-bread, like what the fuck? But I fucking love that character. He's probably the character that I related to the most in the show, which I think says a lot of weird things about me, but eh. I also love the big bad of this show, or at least this first season, who is basically, like, essentially their psychiatrist, who's secretly, like, a really ancient demon. And he's been keeping a close eye on Raquel, because, obviously, she's the key to his whole scheme. And that guy is great. Like, he's, like, this really calm and collective, really intelligent guy with extreme anger issues. And it's just kind of funny to see this guy who's constantly talking in these, like, psychological terms who will just randomly, like, burst out and, like, beat one of his minions. Like, at one point, he beats one guy's face in with, like, this trophy. I also love Raquel's brother. He is the character who is essentially in the role that a lot of women are on superhero shows. And by that, I mean he's kind of the love interest for the main character who's kept out of the loop from everything. So you're constantly feeling really bad for him because he's constantly getting, like, stood up and shit like that. But if they would just tell him what was going on, then he wouldn't get his heart broken so much. Which was a nice reverse gender role thing because you normally don't see that character as a guy unless they're like a father or a brother or something. Though I guess technically he is a brother, so what the fuck am I talking about? My point is, it was just nice to see a guy in that role for a change. But yeah, Crazy Head, this is a really funny show. If you like horror comedies, if you like British comedy, if you liked The Misfits, I'm assuming, then you definitely need to check out Crazy Head. This show is hilarious, it is super fun, and it has one of the greatest final lines of any season of any show I've ever seen. And if you want to know what that line is, you're going to have to watch the show for yourself. Anyway, my fellow Gorehounds, as per usual, like, comment, subscribe, and be sure to ring that notification bell on my channel, just in case the subscription bug is still happening. And as always, my fellow Gorehounds, peace out, and I'll catch y'all later.